All right, so uh, in this video, I'm going to take a quick look at setting up uh, kind of a Tron grid style uh, texture. Uh, this is a question uh, that was asked, so, um, you know, it seemed like something to make a nice video on. So I've just got this really kind of simple um, uh, surrounding area here, just uh, some softly um, rounded uh, walls so that it's kind of just out of the way. And then in the center section here, we have uh, this little arena with a little Pac-Man kind of style grid in there. Um, this is just something I threw together to have something to uh, to test on. So uh, we're going to look at, uh, at creating something that will look kind of like a, a Tron light grid here, where um, where we will have um, lights coming along all of the edges of these individual polygons. Okay, now what I've done here too is you can see that in some areas I have kind of extra subdividing edges uh, along here. That's just because of uh, the way that I created this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave those on there and that will show you how you could have things like this to help add extra definition or how you could remove these uh, to create something where it's a little more sparse and the grid lines are, um, are more spread apart so they're really just on kind of the edges of uh, of your materials. All right, so let's, uh, with that, let's actually hop very first, uh, just over into Photoshop. I'm gonna make a new image here. Uh, 512 by 512 pixels will be fine. You could go higher resolution, but uh, it's not really gonna be necessary. Uh, and I'm just gonna start with a black background, and I'm just going to uh, very unscientifically create a grid roughly, or excuse me, a box rather roughly in the middle of this. And this is just going to be the basis of our grid texture. So uh, I'm going to invert that selection and I'm just going to fill it with white. And you know, that's, that's it. You could do this so that you just have maybe an L along one side. And actually here, before I do that here, let's back up and nudge that up a pixel. Um, you could do this so that it had um, just kind of one edge in the bottom or one edge in the top. And then you would let that tiling uh, handle creating a full grid. The reason that I'm doing it this way is so that we actually have uh, the grid lines centered over uh, the individual um, polygons and the polygon edges. And I'll show you what, what I mean when we get back in there. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and let's just put it on my pretty cluttered desktop. So I'm going to make a new folder. Uh, we'll just call this grid and I'll call the image grid and we'll go from there. I'm making this a black and white image uh, because it's going to give me more flexibility inside of Modo. So um, let's go back over to Modo here and I've got my um, my uh, my set bit, uh, excuse me, I've got my uh, set broken down into two pieces. So I have kind of the uh, the inner area that's the that's the little maze and the outer area that's kind of the grid and the walls and things like that. Um, and actually here before I uh, continue, let's hop over to the render view and I'm gonna take the floor material here. I've got the same material on the walls and then on the outer, it's just kind of a dull reflective uh, black. So. I'm just gonna copy this and I'm just gonna paste it onto the floor for right now. And if we look down at this, you should see reflection. Yep, there we go, we've got a little bit of reflection. I've basically taken the environment and just extremely heavily simplified it. It's still a four color gradient, um, but I've got it getting, I've got it going to much dimmer at the top. It's not showing up uh, right here because that's just your standard gradient. But um, yeah, it's going, if we look at the environment material, um, from dark gray to medium gray to black at the top. So that's just so that we get a little bit of light on there So it's not completely black and we're gonna let most of the lighting come from the the grid itself. So uh, before we actually uh, put the oops, Before we actually put let's call this grid the uh, the material on here I'm gonna start by creating the UV map and this is uh, kind of an essential piece of uh, creating something like this uh, because, oops, I named the wrong one. That's all right. Uh, because if you don't have your UV set up right, this is just going to be a heck of a lot more work than it really needs to be. Um, you need to go and find all the individual edges. You can either paint them or um, use a, a material that's going to hit edges. Uh, but really, this is going to be much simpler. So all we have to do is create a barycentric UV. And if you're unfamiliar with barycentric UVs, what it is is it's a UV projection that takes every individual polygon and fits it, squashes it rather, directly in the zero to one space of, um, of, UV, of UV space. So um, let's just go ahead, UV projection tool. I'm gonna set the projection mode to barycentric. And then all I have to do is um, just click on the viewport. 
And there we go, you've got a barycentric UV. So if I click on this, you can see that selects every polygon in that mesh, okay? If I select one of the edges, you'll see that's gonna select a whole bunch of edges just throughout here. If I select this edge, same thing. So these are just basically um, all four sides of all of the individual polygons, okay? And that is how we're going to map that uh, grid image onto here. So let's go back over to our render view and I've got my area hidden, so there we go. Uh, so what I've got here is just a grid material that's on all of this. So let's go over to the desktop and let me go grab my image here and I'm just gonna drag and drop it right above the material and since I already have that, uh, that UV selected, it's just going to dump right onto that. Uh, if I had multiple UVs, it would dump onto that if I had that one selected. And actually, in this case, I only have one, so uh, it would go to that anyway. Uh, so you can see now we actually are getting those grid lines showing up, but right now they're just mapping in as the, uh, the diffuse color. So what I'm going to do is right-click and go to Basic, and I'm going to choose the Luminous Amount. You don't want to use Luminous Color because then you're going to be stuck with uh, just black and white. If I set this to Luminous Amount, I can go into my material and then I can more freely change my luminous color uh, from here. So if we want to uh, go green, there's green. If we want to go down to blue, there's blue. Uh, if we want red or orange, whatever. You just pick and there you go. So that will map your, uh, your grid onto uh, this uh, mesh really simply, really easily. And as I mentioned here, let's zoom in here. Um, you can look at areas like this which is going to be this polygon right here. And if I take um, if I take this part here, and here, let's zoom out a little bit, I, and I were to delete that, then I would have to remap my barycentric UV, but I could get um, that edge to disappear. So here, let's try this. Right when I delete it, it's just going to look really weird because it just caused some problems. But if I go over to my UV layout, and we just... Um, remapped the projection. Let me go back here. Now you can see that I don't have that subdividing edge that I had over there. Now likewise you can easily go in and add subdivisions here. So I could select uh, some polygons here. Let's um, bring up my model. Um, let's add two edges into there and just click uniform. And again it's not going to make any changes uh, until we, uh, until we remap this, so here, let's make sure that I'm centered up on that part. Um, but yeah, now if I go back to my UV, see, because those edges are falling down the middle, so it's not what we want, uh, but I can just go to projection, barycentric, again, click, it's gonna remap that barycentric UV, and now when I look at that, I've got the subdivided section here, whereas before this was just one solid wall. So that gives you really nice control over uh, where your edges are going to lie and works pretty well. So let's look at one last thing here, uh, just so we can see how this material is gonna work. I'm gonna drop us right down inside the grid here, and let's actually switch this to my camera view, because I want to, um, I'm holding um, option control and then right clicking to, uh, to give myself a wider, uh, a wider uh, angled lens. Okay, so we can actually get down in here and kind of feel the space and let's just take a spot like right here. Um, and what I can do here is, let's go and make some adjustments now to this material. And I'm gonna look at the floor material and then the, uh, the upper material, just uh, since we have this scene up. So first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my, uh, since I have roughness already turned on, I'm gonna turn on blurry reflections. You can see that's gonna blur out my floor so it's not quite so heavy. I think that's a little bit too rough, so let's maybe back off to 20%. There we go, so something like that kind of works. And then I want to apply something similar here. So let's go up to our, um, our material for the, for the grid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to back off the color. So you see now we go to just almost pure black with the shiny. And I'm going to put the same amounts in, which actually here, let's check 5 and 50 for my uh, specular in Fresnel. So let's put that in. I'm going to turn on match specular. And now we see the reflections of the other grid areas kind of come into play here, which can make this interesting depending on how you're going to do it. It's going to give you the false sense of transparency in space, so uh, it could be really interesting. Uh, one way that you can taper that off is by turning down your specular color, which is also going to be your reflection color, and it's going to mute the reflections a bit more. So if I go down even lower, 
If I go all the way to black, these are just going to get muted a bit more. And the other thing I could do is, again, turn on blurry reflections. So with blurry reflections set to 40%, you really lose all sense of that, though. So I'm going to take this pretty low. Let's go down to maybe 10% roughness. So we still see the reflection coming in. Um, and we can still see what's going on. And that might even still be a little bit high. Maybe I'll go down to 5%. So you get the idea that these surfaces now are reflected surfaces, but at the same time, they still give you some of that illusion. And you could go even lower if you want that effect to be even more subtle. You go down to something like 2%, where you're going to get a very subtle blurring of the reflection that will, of course, increase with distance, but, um, but you end up with a really nice uh, kind of look there. So let's kind of pull out, and we can see this whole area. So there you go. Pretty simple. Um, I could do something also like, uh, here, let's go to the floor real quickly, and uh, increase the color on the floor. And since the floor itself is, um, is in this environment that's dark, it's not going to get uh, very well illuminated by anything but the grid. So you're just going to get kind of that glow coming off of the grid landing on it. So even if I go up to all the way to white, it's just going to light up the floor a little bit which that might be too much, but you know, you can pick and choose here. Um, anyways, that's it. That's, uh, that's how to set up your whole Tron grid, uh, set up your barycentric UV, uh, apply a grid, adjust the grid by adding or removing edges on your, um, on your polygonal faces, and, uh, and you're set and ready to go. You can create some, uh, some nice, uh, interesting, stylized kind of looks just uh, right off the bat. I uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, thanks, and see you in the next one.